Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. This is the Virginia College Fair for all Virginia students. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I just have a few housekeeping items for you before we get started this afternoon. You'll be able to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Um, just a quick note, uh, I would encourage you to, to name the college in your question so they know who um, you are directing their question to and they can answer appropriately. So put that name of the college in your question. This is a webinar, so turn your phone, your phone, your camera and your microphone are off. Um, and so our panelists can't see or hear you tonight. And that's why it's important that you put those questions in the Q&A. Um, this is just one of the many sessions that's happening. So feel free to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available um, on the website that's listed here, which is uh, strivescan.com slash Virginia. So now, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. We have a great list of institutions for you to hear from tonight, and you're first going to get to hear from the University of Virginia Wise. Thank you, Ivy. Hi, everyone. My name is Presley Taylor. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my screen. I am an admissions counselor at UVA WISE. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into the presentation with some general information. So um, UVA WISE was founded in 1954. Um, kind of our purpose and um, the reason we were founded is to bring higher education to our region. And um, we partner with UVA to do that. And we are still the only division of UVA um, that there is. We are a four year public liberal arts college. Um, and one of our biggest um, summer points, I guess, is that we are nationally ranked for our students having some of the lowest debt in the nation. When looking at our size, we have around 2,000 students. Um, our student faculty ratio is a 13 to 1. So you definitely get a lot of one on one attention from your professors, and they know you and you know them, and you make a lot of good connections that will also help after you graduate um, and will lead to you possibly getting employed somewhere. So just talking about where we are located in Virginia. So we are where that red star is right there. So we're about um, 30 minutes from Kentucky and now from Tennessee. But if you compare our location to um, other Virginia cities, we're about three hours from Roanoke, five hours from Richmond, um, seven to nine hours from Nova and six to eight hours from Virginia Beach, kind of just depending on where you live in those areas. So now moving on to our academics, these are a list of our majors and programs that we offer. So the two um, left columns, those are our majors and the column on the right are our pre-professional programs. So those pre-professional programs can be paired and are paired with a major of your choice. Um, so for example, if you did pre-med and you more likely major in something like biology, um, that would help with you going to medical school. Something that we're really, really proud of at UVA Wise is our undergraduate research opportunities. And um, where we are smaller, we do offer um, most of our students, anyone that's really interested in doing undergraduate research, they are allowed to do so. It spans across all departments. And um, though we are small, we do have really, really advanced technology you can use. And where there's less competition to use that technology, it's more accessible to our students. Another program we have um, that I always like to like, kind of give a shout out um, is our Army ROTC program. For a lot of students, um, this is a great way to get their college paid for. A lot of them will come here for completely free and also be getting, be getting paid in the process. After graduation, they'll go on, um, they'll have their degree and they'll go into the Army as an officer making a pretty good amount of money. And so that's a really good opportunity that for a lot of our students um, uh, look into and take up on. Another um, program we have here is called Innovate to Elevate. So what that is, is all of our students um, and faculty and staff actually get a free iPad, keyboard, and Apple Pencil. That's actually what I'm using right now um, through this presentation. So kind of the reason behind that is to um, make sure all of our students have the technology that they need to be successful in their classes. The iPads come kind of like preloaded with different programs that normally would cost you some money. So it has Microsoft Office on there and an ability. Um, another perk is that a lot of our professors have actually used the iPads to do some more hands-on learning. So instead of sitting and doing lecture for the whole like hour block of class, they will have their students download a program. Um, it was a more like hands-on learning experience with the module. So that makes learning um, a little more enjoyable. And for some people, they learn better that way. Another perk of the iPads is that um, usually eBooks are a lot cheaper than physical copies. So you can buy your e-textbooks and just keep them on your iPad and save you some money um, in that aspect as well. 
So just a brief little um, tidbit about our athletic programs. We have 13 different programs here, um, men's and women's sports. You can kind of like take a look at those. If you are interested in participating in those events, um, feel free to reach out to me and I can connect you with those coaches. Um, if you're not interested in participating, they're all really, really fun events to participate in or like to come watch anyways. Um, and those are free for students to come too. So now getting in a little bit about student life. So um, we do have 50 plus clubs and organizations on our campus spanning from social clubs, academic clubs, service clubs. So basically um, there's a little bit of something for everyone. If not, um, our student activities um, workers are really, really great at getting new programs started. So if there's something we don't have that you wanna start, it's really easy to do that here. Um, we also have Greek life fraternities and sororities. We do recruitment in the fall and the spring. Um, we offer intramural sports, so we have different one-day events, and we have um, team sports, so tournaments. So um, basically what that is, is we are actually the national cornhole champions, in that, and that's kind of stemmed from a one-day event. So you can participate in those, or you can participate in um, the team events like flag football, basketball, volleyball, stuff like that. We also have what's called outdoor recreation. So what that is, is they plan trips for our students to go to um, either in the region or a little bit outside of the region. Um, they've gone skydiving, ATV riding. Um, then they've gone to professional sporting events, amusement parks, and those trips span from anywhere to free to like 30 to $50, just kind of depending on what that is. Now a little bit about financial aid. We offer um, a lot of merit and need-based scholarships here. We offer work study opportunities. Um, we have one program, it's called Within Reach. And what that is, is if for all, any Virginia student um, whose parents make $40,000 or less a year, they come to uva wise for completely tuition and fees free. Um, this year where we are test optional, our merit scholarship opportunities have really opened up. So for a lot of students that have a 3.8 or above, they're able to come tuition and fees free as well. So now just a little bit about next steps. You can apply now on our website and we also accept the Common App. Early admissions one deadline is December 1st. What you'll need for that application is your high school transcript, a personal essay, and a $25 application fee. Like I said, we are SAT, ACT optional, so you do not have to send that if you don't want to, but you can. And um, right there is my contact information. Presley Taylor is my name. Um, so if you want to, feel free to reach out to me. We are accepting visitors right now on campus, so feel free to schedule a visit, and I hope to see you on campus soon. Thank you so much, UVA Wise. Um, and those listening, please don't hesitate to put those questions in the Q&A. Our panelists are able to answer those um, even before they present. Next up, you're gonna hear from the University of Richmond. Thank you so much. My name is Lauren Bennett and I'm from the University of Richmond. Um, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different today. We just had a new video released. So I am going to go ahead and play this video for you all. Um, I think it, really captures what I would want to say in a much more eloquent way. So let's give it, let me make sure, one second, that I shared my video, or that's my audio. Okay, perfect. And let's go ahead, here we go. It starts within you an idea, a passion, a desire to change the world, and a drive to challenge yourself. It starts within you, and it leads here, to the University of Richmond. Located on a beautiful 350-acre wooded campus just minutes away from downtown Richmond, we are a private university that gives you the best of both worlds, all the economic, professional, cultural, and social resources of a capital city, coupled with the vibrant, diverse, and inclusive community of our suburban college campus. From pristine Atlantic beaches to the Blue Ridge Mountains to our nation's capital, our central location can readily connect you to world-class cultural, recreational, educational, and professional opportunities but it's the opportunities available right here on campus that are truly impressive. The University of Richmond is home to three undergraduate schools, the School of Arts and Sciences, the Robbins School of Business, and the Jepson School of Leadership Studies. However, there are no direct entry programs for any of these schools. What does that mean for you? Well, there's no pressure to immediately declare your major. Once you enroll, 
you'll have time and access to explore more than 100 majors, minors, and concentrations. Our average class size is only 16 students, all taught by real professors, no teaching assistants. We're also committed to undergraduate research and mentorship opportunities. That means you'll get the kind of personal attention you need when narrowing down your choices. Can't decide on one major? No worries. More than two-thirds of our students pursue multiple areas of study. We admit the most talented, accomplished students. Then we do everything we can to ensure you can bring your talents here. That includes meeting 100% of demonstrated financial need for all admitted students. When you're not in class, well, that's where the vibrant community we mentioned really comes into play. Over 90% of our students choose to live right here on campus. We're also home to more than 180 student organizations. From academic, cultural, leadership, religious, and honor societies, to fine and performing arts, service organizations, and Greek life, if you have an interest in it, chances are there's an organization here waiting for you to join. Searching for something a little more competitive? Look no further than our intramural athletics or the 17 teams of our NCAA Division I Richmond Spiders. The Richmond experience isn't limited to what you can do on campus, though. 67% of spiders study abroad through more than 70 programs across 35 countries. And when it comes to internships or research projects, we won't just encourage you, we can help you fund them. The Richmond Guarantee ensures that every undergraduate is eligible to receive up to $4,000 for an unpaid or underpaid summer internship or faculty mentored research project. And does it pay off? In short, yes. Every year, we host more than 150 career workshops and conduct more than 600 interviews with job recruiters right here on campus. And when you graduate, you'll join more than 51,000 spiders living and leading in all 50 states and 95 countries around the world. From Wall Street to Hollywood Boulevard to near-Earth orbit, wherever you go, you'll find that spiders are everywhere. And that's a good thing. Our interconnected web and career preparation help 94% of our grads find employment within six months of graduation. So, what's your idea? your passion. Bring us your dream and we'll help you achieve it. There's no telling just how far it will take you, but we can tell you where it starts. It starts within you and it thrives at Richmond. Okay. So hopefully that helped to give a little bit of an overview of Richmond. Um, and there, there are a few things I do want to highlight. Um, Richmond has a few different application plans. We have early decision, early action, and regular decision. Our early decision um, one is a November 1st deadline, as well as our early action is also November 1, which is right around the corner. Um, and then we have early decision two and regular decision, which are both a January 1st deadline. Um, a few things that are different this year, we are test optional this year for the first time in institutional history. So don't feel that you need to submit an SAT or ACT to be considered for either admission or merit aid at Richmond. Um, as the video mentioned, we do meet 100% of demonstrated need for all of our applicants. And something that's really unique to Richmond to our Virginia residents is that if your family makes $60,000 or less, so your household income is $60,000 or less, you are eligible for a full tuition, room and board, um, financial aid scholarship to Richmond. So it's a really great thing to highlight, especially for our Virginia residents. Um, and I hope to hear from you guys soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lauren. Um, and thank you, University of Richmond. Next up, you're gonna get to hear from Salem College. Awesome. Hi, everyone. So let me get this pulled up. So uh, my name is Ray Celeste Tanner, and uh, I am an admissions counselor here at Salem College. We are a women's liberal arts college located in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, we're pretty close to Virginia. I'm a native of Virginia myself, and it takes me about four and a half hours to get um, to my hometown on the northern neck of Virginia. 
So we are a liberal arts college, um, which you have heard a little bit about now, but I just wanted to highlight some of the great things about attending a liberal arts college. Um, liberal arts colleges are typically focused on undergraduate education, as well as the importance of a cross-disciplinary education. Uh, this means you'll be taking classes in a variety of different subject areas, and we'll be able to look at problems from a range of different lenses and perspectives. It also means you won't have to decide on a major right away, which I know was really helpful for me when I was in high school. Uh, I know at 17, I had no idea what I wanted to do, or 18 or 20, or 19 even. Uh, but a liberal arts college is really great because it doesn't just train you for a job, but it helps you um, develop these critical thinking skills that will do well in any job. Now, why would you want to go to a women's college? Uh, well, first of all, um, graduates of women's colleges earn on average $8,000 more per year than graduates of co-ed colleges. So it can be a pretty lucrative decision. The other thing that I think is really, really important is that graduates of women's colleges are more likely to enter male dominated fields and to major in subjects like math, science, or pre-med than women in co-ed colleges. This is really important um, and because we really want um, strong women who are, are ready to change the world. Uh, and so we think a women's college really prepares women well. Now Salem specifically, uh, we are ranked the third um, top liberal arts college in North Carolina and 24th in the country. We're ranked 10th for social mobility. So uh, we have a wide range of students on campus, a pretty diverse um, group of students with lots of different so socioeconomic backgrounds, quite a few Pell eligible students. Um, but again, it, it really does pay off to attend Salem. We have a student body of less than a thousand students. Uh, so this means you'll have really small class sizes. Our average class size is 12 to 15 students with a student to faculty ratio of 11 to one. This also means you're going to have great one on one interaction with your professors so they'll help you um, when you need a, when you're applying to jobs or to graduate schools with letter of recommendation, um, but also help you in class to really uh, help your education. 42% of our students identify as women of color uh, and we have a 100% acceptance rate into law school as well as a 90% acceptance rate into medical school and health related graduate programs. So really strong outcomes there. There are a variety of different majors you can choose from. So um, although it is a liberal arts college and you will be studying quite a few different subject areas, you can choose a major. All of our students choose a major. Uh, and some of our students have multiple majors or even a couple minors. Now we're all about learning outside of the classroom here at Salem. So 100% of our students complete internships. And this is really important um, for our, our success rates in getting students into graduate schools and also uh, working after college. The other great thing about internships is it kind of helps you test out a career path. <laughs> so if you think you really want to do something and then you do an internship and you realize, eh, maybe that's not the field for me, um, it, it kind of helps it, well, it really helps, um, especially with the major exploration. We also have cross registration at Wake Forest University for no extra tuition. So you get all the benefits of attending a really small liberal arts college while also getting the benefits of um, having an R1 school just down the road. We participate in division three athletics. So we don't have athletic scholarships, but we do have really competitive student athletes in the following sports teams uh, and quite a few clubs and activities on campus. So we do, there's always something going on on campus at Salem. As far as application requirements, um, all of our students need to submit an application and they can do this on the Common App um, or they can do it on our website. Uh, what you'll need is your official high school transcript as well as a teacher recommendation and a writing sample. We, um, for the past several years, we've not required the SAT or ACT scores. Um, we think that uh, a transcript is a better predictor of success. So we're really gonna focus on, um, first we're gonna take a holistic approach to looking at your application, but we're gonna focus a lot on your letter of recommendation and your transcript. As far as scholarships and aid go, um, we have merit-based scholarships, uh, including a half tuition merit scholarship for students with a 3.25 or higher, 
um, and a transfer merit scholarship for the same GPA. We also have an art scholarship and music scholarship, but you'll need to apply by December 1st for those. We do offer rolling admissions, so you can apply and find out whenever you'd like. Um, but if you're interested in the art or music scholarship, definitely apply by December 1st. And we have plenty of need-based aid. Um, those were just our, our merit-based scholarships, but if you fill out the FAFSA, that's how we determine your need-based aid. So we would love for you to connect with us. Um, you can email us or call us, but we also have a really great virtual tour. Um, it's a personalized virtual tour where you'll uh, be live with a, a current student and they'll give you kind of a walkthrough of campus. Um, so we would love for you to do that or you feel free to email me, um, but I look forward to, um, to getting your inquiries. Thanks. Thank you, Salem College. Wow, I've already learned so much and I know our audience has too, but we still have several colleges to go. So next up, you're going to hear from Elon University. All right. Thank you all so much for taking time to be here today uh, to learn a little bit more about some great institutions. My name is Tyson Glover. I'm the admissions counselor for Elon University uh, and located in North Carolina. I'm going to tell you a little bit about our institution and always happy to take questions afterwards. Um, but want to start off in the most Elon way of welcoming you. That's right with an acorn. Uh, for those of you scratching your heads right now, that is a very Elon specific tradition that we do. We welcome our freshmen uh, and our first year students into our university by giving them an acorn that we want you to hold on to for your four years at Elon. This is an opportunity to show your growth over those four years and that you are going to change as a student and as a person. Uh, and at the end of the, your four years, you're going to walk across the stage and receive something else that we'll get back to in a little bit. But a great place to start. Where is Elon? So Elon University is actually in the town of Elon. So a classic college town right there in the heart of North Carolina. We're about three hours from the beach, two and a half hours from the mountains. So best of both worlds right there. Major cities of Greensboro and our state capital in Raleigh is about an hour away. So close to those things. But knowing that we are very much our own entity, we are not a uh, suitcase school. We are not a commuter school. We are very much our own entity where students are living, learning, being on campus for four years. 6,291 total undergrads, 80% of those students are coming from out of state. 47 different states are actually represented. And currently we're at 19% racial and ethnic diversity. Love to see that number continue to rise. Uh, we also have about a thousand grad students. So 7,000 of your closest friends here at Elon University. I sort of call it the Goldilocks effect. It's not too big, it's not too small. It's gonna be just right for you to get to know your classmates and your community. Let's go by the numbers here. So we have four undergraduate schools, all of which are at the highest accreditation possible. So regardless of what you want to study, we know that it's going to be great. Uh, we have 60 plus majors to choose from. And like a lot of institutions, we are direct entry, meaning if you, if you are undecided, if you show up undecided, that's fantastic. Uh, but you do not need to apply to any of our programs specifically, meaning if you wanna study business, for example, there's no need to apply to our business school. You can just start taking business courses. We have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of 20. So that's not, there's not an extra zero at the end of that. It's not 200 people in a classroom. It is 20 and a 12 to one student to faculty ratio means you're going to get to know your professors. They're gonna to get to know you uh, and you'll never have a teaching assistant or a graduate assistant actually teaching a class. All of our classes are taught by faculty uh, and the other side of things, getting outside of the classroom, we also understand that learning happens everywhere. So we have the five Elon experiences. We are for 15 straight years now, number one in the nation for study abroad. So 88% of our students overall will study abroad at least once. Uh, internships, research, service, learning, and leadership are great ways to get out of the Elon bubble into the world and get those experiences under your belt. But we do require at least two out of these five experiences in order to graduate. Now between living uh, on campus in the classroom, uh, outside in those experiences, what's your life at Elon really gonna look like? First of all, you're definitely not gonna go hungry. We have 15 plus dining halls, retail restaurants, plenty to do on our campus. 
284 plus clubs and organizations. All of those are student founded and student led. And we are D1. We compete in the Colonial Athletic Association, the CAA. We have 17 D1 teams and a tight knit community. There's a great shot of our student section called the Phoenix Fanatics. Uh, but a lot of tight knit community. We really genuinely care about our students. We want you to succeed. And we also want to prepare you for what is after these next four years. And as I mentioned in the beginning, we start our uh, students off with an acorn. Now when you graduate, you're actually given an oak sapling. That's right, an actual tree. Uh, that we want you to take that tree and then actually plant it wherever you go after Elon. And there's uh, actually in my background right here, I have my tree right there underneath my Elon degree. So I also graduated proudly from Elon. Uh, but that is a nice tradition that we have. We want students to sort of see where their roots take them after Elon. Uh, where is this taking you? How is this really going to affect the next four years and beyond? And what, in other words, you know, what does life look like after Elon? So overall, 95% of our students, they are employed. They are in graduate school, completing an internship working for a service organization like Peace Corps or AmeriCorps. And out of that 95%, 92% of our students are in a field that relates to the career objective. In other words, we are helping them get the degree that they want and then a job in that field after they graduate. And total tuition and total cost can be found right there. That includes room and board because we do require room and board. That puts us in Kiplinger's top 30 for a best valued institution. And what do we look for in admissions and what do I look for as your admissions counselor in the state of Virginia? First off, we have a GPA range. We take the holistic approach. So reading through not just a number, but reading through the essays, demonstrating interest. We want people who want to be at Elon. And this year and the next three years, we will be test optional. So that's important information, updated information as well. Some dates and deadlines coming right up. Uh, November 1st, that's gonna be early decision and early action. January 10th, regular deadline, January 15th. Those are some separate scholarships I want you to be aware of. Three different ways to apply. We do not have a preference, whichever way is easiest for you. And we'd love to stay in touch moving forward. So let us know if there's any questions you have. But thank you so much for taking the time today. Thank you, Elon. Um, audience, please put those questions in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, you're gonna get to hear from Old Dominion University. Great. Thank you guys so much for having me. My name is Ashley Rose. I'm an admissions counselor at Old Dominion University. I'm also an alumni. I graduated back in 2016. So really quick before we get started, if you guys just want to take out your phones, you can open up your camera app or your QR code app and just scan this QR code that's right on the screen. Um, if you guys do that, then a little search bar will pop up and you can fill in some information and we'll be able to send you guys more information about ODU. So just a quick history about Old Dominion University. We are located in Norfolk, Virginia, and we were founded in 1930 as the Norfolk Division of William and Mary. And then in 1969, we did gain university status. So we've continued to grow. Our campus is now expanded to three additional campuses, but our main campus in Norfolk, Virginia um, is about 335 acres. But basically campus is just a giant rectangle. So it's really easy to get from one end to the other. We are surrounded by water, so we, uh, back up right to the Elizabeth River. We're right around the corner from the uh, Chesapeake Bay, 25 minutes from Virginia Beach, 45 minutes from Williamsburg. So a lot going on in the area. Norfolk is home um, to the largest naval base in the world as well. So we have lots of opportunities and um, internship opportunities, job opportunities for our students uh, with the naval base being right here and two large hospital systems in the area. So just some fast facts about ODU. We are considered a medium to larger size school. So we have about 25,000 students. This does include our undergraduate, graduate, and online students. Any given day, you'll probably see about 16,000 people on campus with about 6,000 people actually living on campus. We have seven different academic colleges. That does include our Perry Honors College. And then within those different academic colleges, we have 98 different degree programs. Um, so those range anywhere from STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math, all the way to liberal arts, dance, theater, music, pretty much um, a little bit of something for everyone here at ODU. I will speak to a few of our uh, more popular majors. So definitely engineering, like I mentioned earlier, 
nursing, marine biology, um, communications, marketing, business, psychology, dental hygiene, those types of majors. Our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. Uh, once you first come into ODU, your class sizes might be a little bit larger just because you'll be in those lecture halls for your general education courses like biology, chemistry, English. But then once you get more into your major, they're gonna be smaller and smaller, closer to that student to faculty ratio. And then you'll see the number 33, that is the uh, number of faculty that have earned the CHEV award. So that is the highest award that faculty can earn in the state of Virginia. We are second in the state, only behind William and Mary. So our little running joke is that they've had a couple hundred year head start on us. So we're doing pretty well in that area. So some fun facts about ODU. We do have over 300 different clubs and organizations on campus. Um, we have a Latin American dance club. We have a gaming club, a waffle eating club. I wish I could have joined that when I was here. Uh, but so if you can't find something you're interested, in, you can actually start your own with just you, three other friends and a faculty signature. So it's really easy. Um, we also have during the first week of classes, what we call um, the involvement fair during WOW. So week of welcome, where all of the clubs and organizations will set up tables, booths, you can walk around, get flyers, kind of see what you're interested in. Um, it's a really good way, one, to meet new friends and then also as a resume builder. So we like to encourage our students to get involved early. We also offer 30 different fraternities and sororities on campus. So those range from social to service to multicultural. We have 14 different housing options. Um, we have 11 that are apartment style and three that are suite style. So there are no communal bathrooms here at ODU, which Another thing that I really was looking for when I chose a school was I was not trying to share a bathroom with 30 other people. So that was huge for me. So the most you're gonna be is sharing a bathroom with is three other people. Then we have 17 different dining locations. Uh, Elon, you kind of stole my uh, line there with you'll never go hungry here. So I was gonna say that, but really you're never gonna go hungry at ODU. Um, so we have three all you care to eat dining facilities and then several nationally recognized chains. So we have Starbucks, Pizza Hut, Sushi, Panda Express, um, Subway, Steak and Shake, Cadoba, Chick-fil-A, pretty much anything you can think of, Panda. Um, so just a lot of different dining options um, on campus. Now to the fun stuff. So how to apply. We accept the application uh, two ways. You can apply through the Common App or on our website at odu.edu forward slash apply. There's a $50 non-refundable application fee you will need to sub submit your official high school transcript. And then we have a couple ways for test scores. So we take either the SAT or the ACT. Um, if you've taken that, awesome, you can submit those test scores. If um, you've taken them, but you wanna get your application in quicker, you can self-report those. And then once you're accepted, then you'll be able to, uh, or then you'll be required to submit those official test scores. Or if you haven't been able to take the SAT or the ACT um, and you're just not seeing that you will be able to in the future, uh, we are offering test optional. We've offered it for several years in the past, um, but this year we have waived the GPA requirement for that. So there's no GPA requirement for our test optional option. Um, so we have two deadlines to keep in mind. December 1st is our early action. February 1st is our regular decision. Uh, we do work on a rolling basis, rolling admissions basis. So feel free to submit your application pretty much anytime throughout the year, but just keep those deadlines in mind for our merit-based scholarships. And then if you guys can see, these are our numbers for uh, our tuition for on-campus and off-campus. Um, we also have a tuition calculator on our website that you can just Google really quick, kind of put in the class amount the classes that you think you're gonna take, where you wanna live, and then you'll see um, more of a number that fits you. Um, we also offer uh, financial aid for our students as well. But that's about it for me. So this is uh, our contact information and also our social media. So feel free to follow, feel free to give us a call, um, shoot us an email if you guys have any questions. We are offering in-person tours as well and we look forward to seeing you and hope to have some future Monarchs. Thank you, Old Dominion University. And last call to put those questions in the Q&A. Our final presenter tonight will be the University of Amer the American University of Paris. Bonjour, everyone. Um, I'm going to start my video. I thought I did that, but apparently I didn't. 
Okay. Bonjour, y'all. My name is Julie Sappington, and I'm with the American University of Paris. As our name indicates, we are an American liberal arts university like you find here in the United States, but located in the very heart of the city of Paris. Um, on our slide here, you're going to see uh, our web address, aup.edu. That's where you'll find our crucial information about how to apply and tuition cost majors. All of that is housed there. I also invite you to check out our Instagram. It's at AUP admissions. We're actually gonna have a student takeover tomorrow. So you can go and see what the experience is like for a student at AUP. And you can ask them questions throughout the stories. It's a great way to get in touch with current students and see what their experience is like at the American University of Paris. So a little bit about our campus. Okay, there we are. Um, so we are located in the seventh arrondissement or neighborhood in English. Uh, we're in the neighborhood that's right there next to the Eiffel Tower, between the Eiffel Tower and Invalide, which is where Napoleon's tomb is housed. We have seven buildings in this neighborhood and it is an urban campus. So what that means is you are walking through the streets of Paris between classes, um, but they're all very close to one another, no more than really a five to 10 minute walk between classes, but you are in the heart of the city of Paris for this. We are a small school of just over 1,100 students, but they're from 100 different nations around the world. And what that means is you have small class sizes no matter what, but you're also getting such diverse international perspectives on no matter what topic is being spoken about in the classroom. So it really does enrich and enliven the discussions in the classroom. Our majors and academics. So let's talk a little bit about the majors. International business, global communications, international comparative politics, and psychology are our four largest majors, but we have everything from art history to computer science to quantitative environmental science. We are a liberal arts university. Our majors do tend to um, be more on the humanities and social sciences side of things. The classes are taught in English, so you don't have to come with a specific level of French to attend AUP. You can come with bonjour, and that's it, and that's okay. You'll learn French as a part of our curriculum. Um, so if you don't speak French already, that's fine. Um, you will take a couple of French language courses, which of course are helpful at living in another country. So we have 26 different majors, 39 different minors, and you can double major, major and minor. You can do all, any sort of uh, combination there. But along with our academics, our students embark on study trips throughout Paris, France, and the world. So we take advantage of our location as much as possible as a part of the classroom. So if you are taking an art history class, you are going to be meeting at the Louvre or the Musée d'Orsay or the Rodin or any of those wonderful museums that are right there just next to our neighborhood. Um, or if you're in another class, you know, we have our classes go on field trips on the weekends and they for example, some of the field trips they've done is like in the lower um, left-hand side of the screen there, you'll see uh, our marketing classes have gone to Iceland. We've had social justice, law, and human rights classes go to Israel. Sustainability classes have gone to Sweden. We have had our art history classes not just take advantage of those wonderful museums that are in Paris, but have also traveled to Italy. Um, our film students have gone to the Rotterdam Film Festival in the Netherlands. We have a a comparative literature course called Shakespeare in London that goes to London and Stratford-upon-Avon for the weekend and they go to the Globe Theatre and they see plays and they um, get to see Shakespeare's birthplace. So there's really, you know, bringing the world and the class to life. Anything you're, you're talking about in the classroom with your professors and your diverse international student population, it's coming to life with, a, um, with these classes as well. Our 20,000 alumni are in 144 different nations around the world, making us have one of the most vast alumni networks. Um, we have a career services and internship services department, both, that help you with getting internships. There's so many different international organizations headquartered in Paris, and they're always looking for speakers of other languages. And so, of course, our students come with English and then, you know, learn French as a part of the curriculum, too. So we are on the Common App. If you're applying to other schools via the Common App, you can add us there or you can apply directly through our website. We do a nice holistic review pro, uh, 
review process, excuse me. We're looking to get to know who you are and if you're a good fit for AUP. Um, November 15th is our first deadline. It's an early action deadline. And then we have a February 1st deadline that is a priority deadline. Those are the best for being considered for merit-based scholarships during the review. And you're automatically considered for some merit-based scholarships during the review as a part of it. Merci for joining me tonight. I greatly appreciate your attention. And if you have any questions for me, I'll be in the Q&A box. Merci, au revoir. Thank you, thank you. I would now like to um, invite all of our panelists to turn back on their cameras and we'll go sort of round robin style and you can either share a piece of advice for seniors um, and their families. Maybe you have a fun fact that you'd like to share about your institution, a campus tradition, or maybe you'd like to answer verbally one of the questions that came in through the chat. So I guess um, we'll start with UVA wise. Okay, yeah, so this one's kind of a fun one, I guess. So since it's kind of like spooky season, I was gonna talk about our ghost walk we have. Um, obviously it's one of my favorite things we have here. We walk around campus and talk about some of our alumni and current students experiences with like ghosties all around campus. Um, I went here, I never saw a ghost because I'm not about that, but the ghost walk is really fun. It's a good way to learn about campus's history and traditions. And yeah, I love the ghost walk. <laughs> That's totally fun. Um, next up, uh, University of Richmond. Sure. So we probably do have ghosts on our campus since we are so old, but I, hope, I haven't seen any. Um, but one of my favorite traditions that we have at Richmond is our candlelight ceremony. So it is the night before graduation, and we have all of our students who are graduating, whether undergrad, law school, MBA, whatever it might be. We actually have a lake on our campus, which our students have fishing competitions and things like that. Um, but we surround the lake. We have a bridge and a gazebo that cross the lake. Um, so we surround the lake, light candles, and it's just a great way to all come together as a community. And I really think that's one of the things that really sticks out about Richmond is our community across campus. Um, and that's just kind of our final goodbye to all the students until they come back um, for homecoming. Awesome. Let's hear from Salem College. Yeah, uh, so I think um, my favorite campus tradition that we have at Salem is called Fall Fest. And unfortunately this year it's gonna be held in the spring. Um, so it'll be the first year in its 248 year history that Fall Fest will be in the spring. Um, but uh, it's a time where all of the uh, clash years are um, competing against each other. And it starts at the crack of dawn. Um, actually, before the sun rises, they have uh, the Winston-Salem State University Drum Corps come in and wake up all the students. And the seniors bang on pots and pans. And they put on skits throughout the day. Um, and all of class and everything is canceled for Fall Fest. So it's a really cool uh, time for the class years to really get to participate in a group, you know, kind of project and get very competitive with their, um, their fellow classmates. I'm so glad you're still able to do that this spring. And Elon University. Yes. So uh, at Elon, we actually have a day called Surf Day, which is the Student Undergraduate Research Forum. I really should have thought about how much fun that sounded versus how much it actually is academically focused when I said Surf Day. But the Student Undergraduate Research Forum uh, is really a time when students have the opportunity to sort of like present their research in a TED Talk style format. But it is a really cool community builder where all of a sudden we sort of have that philosophy of what good is research if only a one boardroom of people actually hear it. So you get to go support your roommate, your friends. A lot of students' parents will come in and sort of hear their TED talk, right? The idea of 10 minutes to change the world. Uh, so it's a really cool way to sort of have people come together uh, in an academic style of things, but also uh, you get to deliver your own TED talk. Who doesn't want to do that? I think that's on so many bucket lists, right? <laughs> um, next up, Old Dominion University. Awesome. So one of my favorite traditions, and I'm sure Amin, who also is my colleague here, can um, attest to this, is we have a tradition um, that we have a big university seal um, in the middle of our campus. And if you walk across it while you're a student, you won't graduate. 
on time or you won't graduate at all. I'm guilty of this. I walked across it and I graduated a semester late, so it's true. <laughs> um, but then, so what, something really special about that is that all of our graduates on the day of um, graduation, you get to line up in the student web center and actually get to walk across it on the way to the Ted Constant Convocation Center where the ceremony is held. So it's really special. A lot of students will like dance on it, jump on it. I've seen people kiss it. So uh, just a really special tr tradition here at ODU. Great way to celebrate a meaningful milestone, that's for sure. And finally, the American University of Paris. Yeah, so speaking of ghost or fantôme, um, what that is for us is, you know, we've got Napoleon's tomb housed just around the corner. So like, like I said, it's probably pretty haunted around where we're at. I don't know that we have any traditions to that though. Um, but after Halloween comes Thanksgiving, and that's when we have a really fun Thanksgiving feast on campus. And this is what, uh, an interesting concept because, you know, all of our non-American students, which is half the population, are like, what is this? And they are so curious and intrigued. And it's just another nice intercultural exchange that we have on campus. And we have that through Thanksgiving. We have a World's Fair where everybody's um, cultures are nicely on display and everybody gets to share an intercultural exchange. It's a big part of the experience. Wow, what great information was shared today. Um, and with that, I'd like to thank you audience for joining us this evening. Um, as you close out, you're gonna get a quick four question survey. So we hope that you'll provide us with some feedback. Don't forget to sign up for more sessions and this recording along with other session recordings will be available at www.strivescan.com slash Virginia. Have a great um, rest of your week and best wishes with that college search process. Bye everyone.